Welcome to this tech tip on the turning enhancements in EdgeCam 2013 R1. Please refer to the What's New documentation provided with the software release uh, for complete information, as this is only intended to be a highlight of some of the information that's going to have common appeal to customers. One of the new commands is the rough profiling cycle. This is a new uh, command, so you're going to need to add it to your menu in order to use it. And what it does is it removes toolpath by making parallel passes to the part feature. It has many of the technologies that users familiar with the new rough turning and new finish turning cycles will instantly recognize undercuts, stock recognition, integral cutter comp, machining attributes, swarf removal. Good, good stuff. It replaces the old cycle. On the start end display, this has been improved so now the start arrow is always shown along the direction of the turn profile. In past versions, this was always shown based on a climb cut direction, which is the, the way the milling side of the software operates. And that could be a little bit misleading as sometimes the arrow could be placed underneath the turn profile. So now it's always along the profile to prevent any confusion about that. Groove feature and thread feature recognition is improved. For grooves, the gr all grooves are now placed on their own groove layer. That can be controlled in Feature Finder. And U and V shaped grooves are now recognized. You'll want to refer to the What's New documentation for more information on the requirements for U and V shaped grooves. External threads from SolidWorks can also be picked up now. EdgeCam's done that with Autodesk Inventor. Um, external threads for a long time and this is done via CAD links and so SOLIDWORKS is simply another package we're able to do that with. So any external threads that are on your shaft for example when you click the CAD link button that data is transferred over to EdgeCam and when you run Feature Finder you'll have a thread feature already there that you can then go and create turn tool path for. Users with twin spindles will want to take a look at the new option to move the subspindle home without the part that's been added to the move subspindle command. This allows environments where we may use the subspindle for between, machining between centers and then may move it back but not move the part yet and leave the part in the main spindle. That's now possible. And you'll want to note that your Code Wizard post processor needs to be updated to add this option into the to the post processor, and that there's a new subspindle retract empty code constructor that you'll need to configure. Let's show how this works. So we're going to start with a new edge cam part, and you'll notice that we're working in the XY environment. We're going to take advantage of the auto align option that was added in the previous edge cam release. And the auto alignment allows EdgeCam to detect whether the part is better suited to mill or turn and to auto configure the part for us based on that. So when I go to load the solid, EdgeCam recognizes it's a turned part. It automatically shifts me into the ZX environment and it positions the part for me. If I want to change its orientation, I can certainly do that, but it just speeds up the process. We're gonna use one of the, the two solid bodies and the part is stock and then move into Feature Finder. You'll notice the Feature Finder dialog now has graphic images added to it. And I want to remind you that in any dialog, the Help button will have a What's New page on it that explains any new features in the particular command you're working with. So that's a real handy way to find the new items in any release. You'll also have the page tabs for the individual items in that box. So as I hover over the different input fields, the graphic automatically changes for me to help visually coach a new or novice user through the process. If I click on the axial, for example, and then hover over the question, there's text information added. Now on the thread page, we have the find grooves option as well as find threads. And the find threads will identify any uh, th external threads from the CAD links. So when I ask EdgeCam to find the features, the resulting features are all created and you'll notice that we have the, the two front groove and a front thread feature. Let's go shut off the layers with the solids. You may notice the groove layer that's also been added for us. And if we switch over to the features window and take a look at the features, you'll notice if we go to properties and go to the bottom of the properties list, 
the Groove properties, identify this as a vGroove feature and capture the properties of that. This information could be used for perhaps strategy manager machining decisions. Similarly, the front thread feature includes the thread information created in the CAD system, so it just passes that data right over to EdgeCam, helps quickly create the thread feature we would need for thread turning. And I also want to show the zoom cursor enhancement. So I position the cursor and roll the mouse wheel in, and notice that EdgeCam now zooms into the cursor position rather than to the center of the screen as it has done in past versions. This is the way that, that many customers want to see things work, and they've asked for this, and it's been implemented. I'll create the machining sequence, pretty standard stuff, put in the part stickout values, and then let's build toolpath. By way of full disclosure, we're going to be using PCI templates to quickly construct the toolpath where the in, much of the basic information for the cycle is already filled out in the box. That way you don't have to watch me type. And as you read through the box, you'll notice that many of the options are familiar stuff. Ignore undercuts, smooth out the shape if we want to, use current stock, offsets, entity attributes, cutter compensation, lead controls, and even uh, swarf cutting type options. So all of the technology that users familiar with the rough turn and finish turn cycles is right here as well. We'll select the shape to machine at the first prompt. And then as we go to the next prompt, I'll switch you into a turn view, zoom in on the shape, and notice that the arrow is just along the shape rather than to one side or the other. As we build toolpath, notice the motion that's produced, the multiple passes that follow the shape of the profile to cut it in. If we edit that shape and turn on the use current stock and build toolpath to the current stock forging rather than just a specified number of passes, it'll build that toolpath as well. I'm going to go and add in the thread turning, again using a PCI template, and we'll select the new thread feature. So I have the single drive line that we'll want, I can pick the shape, quickly build tool path. Now we do want to note that because the new thread turn cycle is a new command, it may not be in your menu. So if you go to the turn cycles menu and do not see the new rough profile cycle, it's very easy to add in. Simply go to the view menu, choose customize, and in the box that comes up, the commands list is a list of all the commands available. The turn cycles category is where this new command is. And so you can add that new command into your menu, and then you'll want to save that screen layout. Once you've done that, you'll have access to that new cycle.